first rapper, producer, singer, artist to have on the show. I'm going to let you say your name so you can get your intro in, bro. Yes, sir. What's good? My name is Oz Lamar. I'm from Los Angeles, California. Happy to be here today. She, man. Let's go. Sure, Thank you for having me, man. Hey, man. Appreciate you coming all this way. You know, we have some mutual mutual friends that got yeah. you here. Yeah. You know, appreciate him. Shout out him. Um, sure. speak, let's speak about it. The music industry. What got you into music? How old when you did your first, say, song? Uh, Ryan, what it like? How old? Yeah, so uh, the way I got into music, like my entire life, I've been a performer. Like when I was five, I think I started doing plays. My father actually is an actor, and then um, I got into doing musicals, and I found really fell in love with performing music on stage. And then I started learning guitar and piano, and I was like, and then started writing my own music. And I was like, oh, it's way more fun to perform shit that I wrote. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's just authentic to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, you know, words of another person. Um, and then I just can I was probably like eight or nine years old when I started playing guitar and piano and writing my own songs. Eight, nine years old. Now you are old enough. On old the enough. rise, you just you made I seen you just got your video out for your latest song. Yeah, uh latest video is it's, it's actually a song of Spider Cuz in New York. It's called My Time, but then I have one for my latest single, Holy Moly, is dropping, I think, this week. I, yeah. I've, I've been watching that video, and I was like, hey, <laughs> this shit's fucking... Oh, yeah, fantasize. It, oof. And then that Spider-Man one? Yeah, that was fun. So how did that link up? How did that happen? Because I clicked on, on that uh, at name, and I was like, damn, he, he yeah. well-known. He, spider cause, yeah, that's my guy, the local New York Spider-Man. Um, so I actually go to school in New York at NYU, so... And, um, I throw a lot of events. I started this company called Roaring Twenties, which is an event company and then artist management. Mm. So the you know I started throwing events because I'm a performer. Like that's that's the number one thing I love to do. It's the most authentic way you can engage with an audience through your art. Correct. Um, so I wanted to you know make as many opportunities, especially coming out of COVID. I made as many opportunities to perform. You know it started uh, I think in May. I was in New York for school. Uh, we was we were online, but as soon as shit started to open up, I went to Washington Square Park. Pulled up like 20 deep and then brought a big ass speaker, microphone, started performing my shit to the crowd. Like, ended up getting like 200 some people just crowded around. I did that for like three weeks in a row. I was like, oh, this is kind of dope. It's working. And then <laughs> I went back home to LA for the summer and then I was like, you know what, let me, let me do this shit for real, not just popping up to a park, but actually like get some venues. So that's when the, the name Roaring 20s started. You know, we're in the 20s now. Like a hundred years later, it was it used to a hundred years ago, it was the Roaring 20s. It was a bunch of, you know, <laughs> rich, old, wealthy white people partying in big houses. Now it's a Bunch of dope young niggas uh, turning up and, you know, just putting on for the culture. Ooh, putting on for the culture. So exactly. what do you, when you say that, what do, what do you reference? Like, what are you trying to attain with your music, with your production, with, with your company? Like, what, it, what is the goal with, with all that? So for me, for my music, I'm always, number one, just doing what I fuck with. Because, you know, if I don't enjoy what I'm doing, why, why am I doing it? But sure. uh, second, secondarily, like, uh, innovating, just doing what, ha what hasn't been done. Because it's just dope to be able to start something that, that you know, wasn't, wasn't there before. Right. Um, specifically with the events and, and uh, an event company, like, I've been, you know, going out to a lot of parties now that everything's been opened up. But uh, one thing that I was often missing is shit, especially out in L.A., some, sometimes shit can be very much about the cloud or who, who you are, who's there. But... What we really try to do is just create an experience that anyone that is there, they're a community. Like, we want you to be here. We care about you. Yeah. Like, we're here to have a great time and, and you know, showcase dope art. And now actually, now we're bringing um, fashion brands and stuff. Like, just people, the local community, like, being able to showcase what the dope shit that they're doing and You're putting it on the highest platform possible. You know, it's my platform builds, so I can put more people um, higher up with me. Shit. Hold on. Let me. Let's make sure this. Oh, yeah. Let's see. There we go. How's that? How's that? Yo, my check, my check. My check, my check. Perfect. You know, we got to get the quality out of this because you are you are an artist. Yeah. What What's the process that takes in, that takes you into producing or even performing? What's that thought process that gets you in there? Like, you blank everybody out? Do you picture everybody in, in underwear? Like, for performance? What? Yeah, yeah, for performance. Because I, I would imagine it would be a scary, like, everybody has the the scariness of talking in front of an audience. Not a lot of people can do that. Let alone perform songs, remember lyrics, yes. you know? Like, how does that go into process? Yeah, for me, like, I always think about it, the performances, I don't perform for me. I perform the people that, like, like I, I want to 
every single person that's in a room, whether it's like two people or 200, 2,000, like I'm just trying to have make sure everyone in that room has a great time and, and is just, you know, being like having having the best time that they can. Yeah. Uh, and I do that, you know, want to want to connect with those people, make sure every single person that I can is is feeling accepted and, and, right. and welcome. You know, like I was just uh, emceeing a, a party the other day. Uh, like I didn't know a single person there. I was on probably like uh, like a thousand people or something like that. And then I was just on stage, you know, for like they had DJ playing music. I was just turned up, like, you know, giving the mic to the fans, like, oh, you know the words? Oh, yeah, play some shit. And then, and then, you know, like some girl's birthday brought it up, happy birthday. And then I performed a couple of my songs. It's just about having, having a good time. Having fun. Having that good, authentic energy. Like, at the end yeah. of the day, everyone just wants to enjoy themselves. Like, you don't got to make it about anything else. It's as simple as that. So how, how did growing up, you know, you said you grew up here, you went to, LA, to New York. But growing up from here, how was the transition from being a young, eh, you would say a young kid. I think we're at one point we're all kids. And yeah. then we mature into being adults at whatever age. Because you can mature to being an adult at 14, at 10, at 18, 20, 21, and even 30. For some people that don't grow up that yeah. fast. But what was, what was that transition from growing up? Like, did you always see yourself in the stage? You know, you said your dad's an actor. What did you see? What did you want to be when you grew up? It was just in this industry? Or what, did, what was that about? Yeah, it's funny. I'm, I can't pinpoint the exact moment that I was like, oh, no, I'm going to start doing music. But I, I was it started with just like the passion I was like, oh, I like doing this. Let me just keep doing this. I, I, I you know, in high school was would always if I ever got an opportunity to perform, you know, my own songs. And then when, you know, it came to applying to try to get into college, I, you know, I, I knew, OK, I want to do music. I don't want to do fucking I know chemistry like that's you know, that's an important field, but it's not for me. I'm, I can't <laughs> lie. To you. But um. Yeah, like that. I was just following what I fucked with. Yeah. So, what are you studying right now in, in NYU? I'm studying music in the Clive Davis Institute. Uh, yeah. So it's like a holistic program. You study from engineering, uh, business to actual production and oh, recording shit. in the studio. So like sort of all around approach. So I get a little bit of understanding of all the aspects of the music industry. How, you know, you being the first like artist producer that we have here, how is that industry? Like, how hard is it to even tap into a company or to a record label to like believe in you. Is yeah. there a lot of work that you had to do beforehand or was it something like you just started reaching out to people? It was really just uh, you starting just your immediate surroundings. Like, okay, who around me wants to, you know, if I want to make songs, like okay, who's a, who's a other producer that I want to work with, with other artists I want to collab with. It just starts with that. And then I don't know for me, like I just, it just sort of is a snowball effect. Like you meet one person, you meet another and it expands. Mm -hmm. and if what you're doing is just, you know, really authentic, you're just doing you like this shit is supposed to happen. Like that's, that's something bigger than me. It's just my purpose in, in this world. That's your purpose? Yeah. You feel like it? Like, I, I don't know what else I'll be doing. I just, like, you know, you get signs from God and you're doing things right. I think that's the crazier part because a lot of people don't take those signs. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, a lot of people that, are figuring out their life, like, they're doing shit that they're not even even happy with. Like, oh, I fucking hate my job, yet tomorrow you're going to show up from 9 to 5, no matter what, no matter what happens, like, you, regardless if you hate it. But a lot of other people that take the opportunity and take the chance on their dream, it's like, all right, I can get up tomorrow and I love what I do, day in, day out. It will pave the way for me, no yeah. matter what happens. That's where it starts within, like, you got to be honest with yourself. Do I enjoy what I'm doing? Yes. Okay, bet. Keep doing it. Let yeah. me just see where this goes. And then, you know, the more signs you get, then more you can like, oh, okay. Let, let me now proactively start moving this forward. Yeah, it's, it's really all it is. But, like, also being able to see those signs. Like, like when God speaks to you through other people, like, whether yeah. it's, like, a random fucking person on the street or, like, a loved one. Like, just yeah. understanding when those moments, like, when that shit, when you feel that shit. Like, like. You know, you know it, it's how that like that funny phrase like when you know you know when it's for you it's for you and when it's not it's not but a lot of people just tend to ignore the signs so with the whole with your whole process like now you're in your 20s and you're still learning a lot I think if you're not a learner like you can't grow exactly. what was like the downfall that you had to go through to sit where you're sitting right now be in your position what was that like downfall that you're like fuck it was, there's a couple it. of them, but it's, it's not just one. Like, COVID, uh, the start of quarantine was definitely one, because, like, I was I was always a very, like, extroverted person. Yeah. And often, like, like to a fault, like, I, I would, my happiness would depend on me being around people. 
then COVID, obviously, that's a big fucking shift. Like, nigga, I'm, I'm in the house seeing nobody for, like, <laughs> six six months at least. Yeah. And then I had, you know, had to do a lot of, like, you know, self, like, just a- awareness and really being comfortable with myself Fuck without, yeah. like, without the context of anyone else. Anybody else. else. Understanding who I am. You know, that was a very, like, critical period of my life that I'm thankful for. You know, that's, like, science from God. That's what you're talking about. Like, you, I was supposed to be there. It was a big reset for a lot of people. Exactly. And a lot of, I mean, a lot of people... Still didn't take that reset, but, I mean, at least some, the ones that I know and the way I was, like, I did take that shit as a reset. Because how you said, like, fuck. If you had to go to work, you went to work, then you went home. There was no going out. There was no doing anything else. But it was the biggest time for you to start something. If you had the idea, aspiration, or vision to start something, that was the time. I'm not saying right now is not the time, but back then when nothing was open, it was Everyone was on a level playing field. Yeah. The second the world was like in a still bubble, we didn't know when it was going to end. Like you're just like, oh, okay. Like I don't even know how much time I have. I'm just I was like so much in the moment. Yeah. Like like. Did when, you write a lot during that time? Oh yeah, that was when I really what was it like 2020. That was when I really started to develop what was my sound because musically I started as very much a singer songwriter. You know, like from the music side, like I was playing guitar and piano, was doing covers of Michael Jackson, Bruno Mars, James Brown, and then you know in high school I started to get more into hip hop. And, you know, was discovering what that, like, what my place in it was. Because obviously, right. like, when I was younger, my, my pops would always play, you know, the old school shit, especially being out here, like, Dr. Dre, yeah. Tupac, even even back to uh, Sugar Hill Gang, like, the old, old school, way back. But, um, you know, and, and that, when I was younger, it's like, oh, hip-hop is just this thing that my dad likes. But when, you know, in high school, I, I think it was the SoundCloud era, that was like, that was a period of hip-hop that I was now living and being a part of. I was like, oh, wait, this is something for me, too. Yeah, That's for sort sure. Of rediscovery of it, and then finding my sound, and that's, quarantine was a period where I had a lot of, you know, obviously a lot of time to figure out what that was. So what do you enjoy more, like the hip-hop version or going into another genre? Like you said, you brought up, like, Bruno Mars, and, like, what's what's your favorite type of genre to, like, really, say, portray, to sing? Mm. Like, what, what? I, d- I mean, definitely hip-hop. Hip-hop, to me, is, is like, the, the home of, of creativity and self-expression, because, like, I mean, hip hop is pop music right now. Like, it's like, like it, it used, you know, it was used to be like sort of rock and roll, and now hip hop is that. Yeah, hip hop is is the central genre of, of the world. So then, I, to me, like everything else, sort of surrounds it. Um, uh, at least, at least for my world. Uh, but I, I like I like going into a lot of island um right. and, and it, taking taking those those rhythms and putting them in the context of of you know like different different melodies like. Especially being out in New York, those rhythm you have the whole drill scene. Yeah, <laughs> but then I'm, I'm still a Cali nigga at heart, and then, then niggas know it. So like like taking the the West Coast melodies and putting them over some drill drums. I did that in uh, one of my older tracks. It's called AF1. Mm. Um, like it was when I f- first went to New York. Like I had had the initially it was just this beat like over some West. Just the it was pretty much West Coast beat with some horns on it. And then my um, producer that I work with a lot, uh, his name is Ed from New York. He like t- I sent him the project file. Then he you know added some drill drums. I was like, oh what the fuck, this is crazy. <laughs> and then and then you know like he made something dope. Just that aspect of collaboration. So you're just adapting to like the West Coast and the East Coast. Yeah. So since you're in the music. What's your like Mount Rushmore look like music wise? Ooh, like top five, top five, top artists: uh, Michael Jackson, Kanye West, Jay Z, Tupac. Uh, let me see, that's four right there. Ah, uh, damn, J Cole is definitely up there. It's just, there's a cycle. I love Lil Wayne. More as than well. five, but like yeah, if yeah. if it had to be five, what's the last one? The last one, damn. I would say, um, oh, Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. Yeah. Ooh. You said artist, Kanye. That's new Kanye, old Kanye. Or the oh. new one that's coming out right now. Oh, both. It's, 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 I mean, I like the original Kanye, you know, it's definitely, a lot of people see that as, as just, oh, more pure. He, before he was crazy, but it's, it's really like, this, what I see is from Kanye and learn, learn from, from myself as an artist is he's just always pushing. What is the new thing? Yeah. I, I see him doing that now. Like, they just, he just drops some stuff with the game. They're like, oh, Ooh. now, like, he's what, 20 years into his career. Now <laughs> I'm changing the, the game of music. Like, what? Nigga, I thought you already did that. <laughs> like, he's doing that again. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't stop. To me, it's it's consistent. Like the, the music is growing each time, but yeah, I like it's that. not a newer. Oh, it's the same human. Like that video that that's trending right now with with the game and and Kanye. Like, hey, <laughs> he's spinning some facts. Yeah. I mean, obviously he's throwing some shots in there for whatever he needs to, yeah. but that that type. I mean, how you said it's evolving. So, at what point for you has your music evolved? Besides after high school. So 
after high school, when, at what point, or what did you make your music evolve to now where you're just authentically you? It was definitely, I mean, I mean, honestly, the, the thing that evolved was the sound. Like, from the start of making music, because I, I didn't used to listen to it. Like, I, I would have, you know, like, the, the, the music that I first fell in love with, which is, you know, Michael Jackson, Bruno Mars, James Brown stuff. So that was... That was the initial shit that I had in my head, like like the hard, hard wiring, and then I was just making like my my interpretation of it. Right. And then as I as I you know listen to more and I'm exposed to to more different styles of, of art, then it just adds on that goes in, into my little toolbox that you know and I take from when I'm making shit. Right. So that th- that process hasn't really changed. It's just I've become more aware of um, what I can do and then ex- expanding my capabilities. Like n- these last six months, uh, I've I've been in a period of of like sort of pushing my limits. Okay, what styles can I let me let me try some dance hall shit. Let me try some 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 reggae, some pop R and B. And then and now I'm kinda honing, okay, what is what is that initial lane that I'm trying to just put down? Stick to. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So with with all of that, your let's say your your music. So with your music, obviously you say you're trying to inspire, help and and change the culture for the people. So for you, what would it be like the top three that helped you change? The top three artists that like artists, uh, just people in your life, out of your life that you probably haven't even spoken to. Say, let's make a yeah top three, like that impacted your life, so you can move a certain way. Like I would say for me, people that I don't know besides like my parents is like obviously Nip, uh, Kevin Gates, and I would say Kobe. The way they move, the way they speak, I had to imply it into my life and to my lifestyle so I can move a certain way, so I can understand certain things in life. Hey, maybe this wasn't meant for me and I just got to take the signs and I got to move on. Hey, maybe instead of trying to flash all this jewelry and new shoes and new cars, instead of not getting, instead of getting into debt, let me rephrase that and let me not try to impress everybody else and let me do me. That's what I mean. Like, I took those people, their life stories, their what they went through and applied it to myself. I'm like, all right, I didn't go through that. I didn't go through that. But I understand losing friends. I understand not being in the right mind space. I understand what grind is. So is there, like, three people that you look up to that it's like you implemented that shit into your life? Yeah. One is definitely um, Jay-Z. Mm. And how he, you know, started. He was wanted to be a rapper, and then he was. Right. He, I mean, for, first he start. He started, you know, in the drug game, and he's like, "Oh, I'm making millions of doing this, but you know, let me let me do something more." And then he's just taking control and ownership of everything that right. he does, and also it's the way he moves. He's very composed. He's not. He's not going like doing any wild shit. He, yeah. He's in control of every situation that he's in, and, and you know, not looking just in this moment, but like ten years ahead, like, and, and also doing with the mindset of, of helping out you know, kosher and giving, and giving sure. back. Like, there's, there's so many, like, artists that you see, like, oh, Jay-Z helped this nigga out. He's not even putting it on blast, but but he he, he has that that um, mindset of, oh, no, okay, let me do this for me and then help everyone else around me. Yeah, because he has, like, what? He has his brand, his record label, then he has his sports. Exactly, yeah. Rock, yeah, Rock Nation, Rock Nation is, is, is. Manage, is sports management, <laughs> artist management, record label, all that shit. And it's just it's an umbrella, and he's able to, you know, be in so many different fields and have that impact and change it for the better. And all because of music. Exactly. You know, because music is a universal language. I don't care. Like, even if you don't listen to music, you can still respond to that. You can still speak that and understand that. You just hear hear the sounds. Exactly. Like, you feel it. It's an emotion. It's, mm. it's, it's deeper. It's deeper than anything that you see or are thinking. It's just, it's touching your soul. Yeah, because, I mean, if, I think we all here have, ha- we have or have had a song that just touches us in a certain way, that makes us cry, that makes us, even for the gym, makes us hype, or is ready to go go party. Like, we put on that fucking sound, and we're just like, bring out the fucking alcohol. I'm ready to, I'm ready to go at it. Yeah. But it's music. Everybody has a certain music. Like, whether it's a genre, whether it's a certain song, a certain artist, that that person or that sound just resonates in my mind. Is that what, like, your goal is trying to be? Where your song, your music resonates in other people's mind just without even, like, for a certain mood or some shit like that? Yeah, exactly. I, I want my music initially to be common. Like, when, the first thing I'm thinking about is, okay, if I'm starting on a beat or I hear hear something, whether I made it, produced it or not, okay, what is the feeling that I, that I, like, I want to express with this? 
Yeah. Like before I even like sometimes the words would just come first and then and then they're like but still I'll be like okay what what is the feeling that I want to portray because that's the thing that is going to touch people first for sure like sure they might hear the lyric but the but the reason they are attached to it and they're going back to it might be some dope ass bars but if you're not presenting it in a way that is conveying that emotion like niggas not gonna go back to it so what what would your my thing here on this podcast Toast to Light podcast is giving the gems to people. To the, I mean, everybody in this fucking world is always trying to do something. So if you're in music, then there's 10 other motherfuckers that are trying to do music. Yep. If I'm in podcast, there's 10 other motherfuckers trying to do a podcast and so on and so forth. So what would be one or two gems that you would throw at a young girl or guy that's trying to make that happen, that is yep. trying to tap into music? What, 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 what would you tell them if they came up to you and said, hey, how do you get into music? Yeah, so, like, there's now, probably more than ever, especially with the digital world, there's more artists than ever before, no, more music being put out. So, I mean, a lot of people want to seat at the table, but if you want to seat at the table, you can't wait in line. you got to bring your fucking chair there. you got to <laughs> do it your own, in a way that not, so, like, you can't follow the pattern, the game that has been laid out, because that's predictable. Everyone knows what you're going to do. Yeah, like you, you got to create here, one here, for here, yourself. Here. Right. Not just the lane of music that you're making, but the way that you're presenting. Like, for me, at least, I, I, I try to... Every way that, that my music is being presented, seen, heard, like, I'm always thinking more ways that I can put make make it be seen in a, in a different way. Correct. Um, that blooper for Holy Moly was... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, shit, that, shit, that shit was pretty sick. The blooper? Ooh. I, yeah. I was tapping in. I was like, the whole fog and everything. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, and the, the, I like to do a lot of performance videos. Yeah, yeah. Like, again, like, that's, that's just some, that's the, my roots. Is in performance, so I'm always trying to bring that back. Like I did for my song AF1 a while back, there was there was horns, and I had a, a live cellist. I went to Washington Square Park and pulled up my microphone, plugged it into you know my, my recording device, and just perf- you know, had a uh, take a video of me performing it, posted it, and uh, like because again, like if if the, that's the easiest way I know to connect with people authentically, and that right. the, f- fir- the first way to do it is in person, but a lot like the world is online right now. This is where, like a whole other so that, w- that would be the advice online. Uh, oh no! The, the advice is just make taking your own seat to the table. Mm. Simple as that. Whatever you're scared. I mean, then you're not in the right place. <laughs> then you got to <laughs> like you overcome that. Like fear. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't be motivated by your fear either. What? So, with the fear, right? Let's talk about that. What What do you feel is something to be scared of? Like in this in this what you're going through this entrepreneurship because. Even as a musician, like, you're still an entrepreneur because you're going into the unknown. Like, you have no idea um, if one day this is going to be the longevity and pay the way. Like, we see NFL stars that fucking busted the whole ass playing football, high school, college, get into NFL one, two years, and they're done, and then they're fucking working at the McDonald's down the street. Yeah. So what's that fear in this, what you're doing right now, being so young? Yeah, my biggest fear is... Being complacent in what I'm doing and and losing the passion or, or, or forgetting the reason that I'm doing this, mm. and you know that that happens sometimes, but it's always under knowing how to find your way back. And and for me, that's that's like because when, when shit can be speeding up, like when I was sure. I, when I started the Roaring Twenty stuff in this, this past semester in New York, Great. I was you know we we're throwing events every single week. Like I was getting more and more artists to perform there. Uh, but then it was moving very quickly. I'm like, oh oh, I'm on calls like every every day. But then I was like, oh, wait, I'm, forget- I'm getting caught up in the motions. I need to take a step back and, you know, just go back to the basics of what, why I'm here in the first place. Go back to just making music in the way that I you, love. You think people lose sight of their vision along the process? Oh, 100%. It's very easy to lose sight, especially when, even when things are going good. Right. Because you get caught up in the – because when, when good things come, it's also, you know, this, especially in the music business, the fame or whatever, level, the clout shit is so, like, I see so many people get caught up in that, and then they think that, oh, that's the only thing. No, no, we just need these, these pop of people there. We just need, we need the hype around it. And, yes, that's, that's a part of it, but understand the, the deeper meaning behind it, the deeper, like, re- reason you're doing it, like, no, because you love this shit. Yeah, I think, like, the whole, I think the world got a, got a little glimpse of the whole process um, when, Nipsey Hussle started talking about it. Rest in peace. But mm. he was giving the gems out about, you know, being the back of his trunk and handing out CDs. Yeah. And I think even the game talked about it. He where he, he, yeah, like like for what, $10, $10 a piece and he sold like 10000 Yeah. Or yeah. And then he 
when he went up to the game and it was in the middle, I think, of Compton, and he went up to his car, and obviously they're from different sides. Yeah. He was like, oh, I thought this guy, he was like, he came, he was at my neighborhood, neighborhood Nip, he was, my, he was my mixtape, let me know. And it's like, all right, back then, how you said, now it's all social media. Back then it was just all hand, hand to hand. This is what, this is my mixtape, this is what I got to go through. I mean, he knows before there would be cassettes, CDs, yeah. just everywhere. And it's like, all right, this is how this has to be passed by. This is how music has to get known. Because if you didn't have a CD player, you couldn't listen in. If you didn't have a, if you weren't wealthy enough to get an MP3, you couldn't even know what the music was or yeah. listen to this person's music. Now it's different. Now we have social media. Now we have TikTok. We even have Facebook. We got YouTube. We have Instagram. We have all these different platforms that you could pay for. But how you said, if if you start losing sight of who you really are because you want to give in to the fame, it's going to cut short, I feel like. Yeah. I feel like that would definitely cut short. So did have you taken, like, those type of or researched those, that type of hustle before and kind of implied it into what you're doing right now? Which aspect? Like, like the from before this digital did, age? Before the digital age. Yeah, like, um, looking back to even NWA, like, they 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 were just you know doing I, actually yeah, looking at Did, Diddy is, is is one that I was looking at like how they were throwing throwing events with Bad Boy yeah. all over New York running the club scene that's a huge inspiration for me that's why I really started this Roaring Twenty shit I was like oh let me do this now in L A let me let me take control of that nightlife scene because that's a huge scene like with those that's where all the DJs are playing those records yeah and, uh, and they're all, are they upcoming DJs that are going to the events or like they're already like have a platform uh, it's both like in New York there, there's you know a lot of like uh, DJs that will be consistent at, at these clubs, yeah, whatever. Um, and you know, like if you, if you're the one controlling the event, then yeah, it's your music being played. You know, what I'm saying like you 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 can control that aspect. That's another thing I was learning from Jay Z. Like he's in control of those. If I could put myself in control of the situation that I'm in, like okay, I'm not just gonna go to the club ask the DJ to play my shit. I'm gonna be like, no, okay, let me talk to the owner. Let me see, let me see. Okay, l- let me rent out your space. I'll pack it out. Just just give me give me the access. I'm like, okay, bet. Now my DJ's playing that shit and. The regulars that are already going to come to the club are still there, but now I'm the one controlling that whole environment. Ooh. That like that's definitely something I learned from you know um, icons that I look up to. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, let me let me apply that for myself. Let me have let me have complete control and the belief in yourself. Like I got this shit. Yeah, confidence. Exactly. Yeah. What's your confidence level? One to ten. Uh, I I know that I'm meant to be here. So Ooh. so that I have a faith in. And, and God guided me. What does that make it, 10? Yeah. But but you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not always the case. Like, sometimes I'll definitely doubt myself. Right. Like, that's a very, very real thing. Like, there's times I'm like, oh, man, am I even doing the right shit? Um, But it's it's more, I, I guess I wouldn't even call it confidence. I just call it faith. Mm. Um, the confidence, you know, fluctuates depending, you know, it could be depending on the day. Correct. Like, obviously, if I'm coming off a show, I'm feeling great. Like, nobody can tell me nothing. <laughs> but if, like, you know, if, if let's say it's been been quiet for a minute, like, and, and, and yeah, I've been, I'm just sort of been alone with my thoughts. That's, you know, in dark times, like, you can get very caught up in shit. Yeah. And then you just have to, again, go back to me, just go back to the basics. So let me, what, what, what just let me just do what I love. Fuck whatever, who's, who's seeing it, like, how many n- views it's getting. Let me just do what I love. I'm like, okay. Then everything else, for me at least, everything else makes sense when I always go back to that. Damn. All right. We're, we're drinking nothing but water on this one. Yeah. You know how we do? Um, all right. So what's the best piece of advice you got getting into this industry? Hmm. Damn. Straight to the heat. Mm. Straight to the heat. That's how we Straight do. You're in the hot seat, bro. Best piece of advice. Not for this motherfucker right here. <laughs> Damn, that's a crazy one. Um, All right, let's start it off. Worst piece of advice. Worst piece of advice. Uh, do what everyone else is doing. <laughs> there that's you like go. the worst piece of advice. Uh, not best. <laughs> best piece of advice. I'm trying to think, like, who gave it to me. Um, you don't got to say who, just honestly, what yeah. they tell you. Trust yourself. I guess, I mean, it's yeah, simple, but. You can say like, who said it. I mean, yeah, that's, that was no from my grandmother. Ooh. Like, Grandma. Like, yeah, you know, like. They know best, bro. No, no one knows you better than you. <sighs> now, it's important to, you know, listen to the people. to their, Like, I'm a very open person. Like, like, I don't care. You could be a homeless person on the street. I'm going to listen to what you have to say. Now, if you're talking mm-hmm. some bullshit, 
I'm gonna stop listening. But <laughs> like, I'm gonna give everyone an opportunity because you know, like, yeah, you never know. You never know, like, who God gonna speak through. Nah, for sure, because it could be, it could be the most random in person, and then they're gonna tell you a message that you never even expected. But it's like how they say, treat the janitor like the CEO, and treat you know, and treat the CEO like everybody else. Like, they're just because you're this doesn't mean I'm going to treat you any better or any less. Exactly. And just because you're this doesn't mean I'm going to treat you, you know, like shit. Yeah. You know, if I'm trying to rephrase that thing, it's like, bro, just treat everybody like if they're CEOs, no matter the way they look, no matter where they're from, they're all important. And honestly, bro, like you never know who you might run into. Yeah. You, yeah. You don't know like who is who. You don't know what who someone knows or what they, what they could do for you, What why you're running into this person. We, we know a real wealthy guy that just wears uh Running shoes, pants, and a regular T-shirt, yeah. and and is very well off. Yeah, takes a grind though. You know, one of the biggest things that I've learned is you can't look. Don't chase the money because if you chase the money, you know it's gonna keep running from you. Chase your dream, chase your passion, make your vision into reality, and what those I, things will come. <sighs> those are except. Yeah, the, the money, whatever, fame, all that shit is, is are those are accessories of Correct. success. Right. The success itself is, is, is you know, just, just chase that and, and that this lies in your passion. Like if you It has to. It has to. to. Like, I think just Derek said it earlier, like, life in general is your teacher. You won't know what it feels to get up until you get knocked down. You won't know how to, how to get up until you actually do it. Yeah. You know, they tell you, you got to go to point A to point B. Go to class, go to college, get a great job, get a great family, get a house, so and so on, so and so forth. That ain't the case. Learn from your experiences. Like, that's that's one of the biggest things I, I've realized. And even also lear- learning from my mistakes, but also the mistakes and experiences of others. That's why, like I said, I'm always open because Correct. it doesn't matter where you are in life. Like, everybody got, got something to say. Like, I, I remember when I was, I think it was in quarantine, like, I was rolling with some people from, like, ATL that wasn't doing, in, they weren't in the best businesses, but like I was, you know, learning from what, how they're moving, like what to not to do. Like, yeah. oh wow, okay, these niggas kind of fucked up their lives. Yeah. <laughs> and like doing this shit, but because it's really not even, and they can still make it better, it's the mentality. Yeah. Like some It's people, all the mentality. It, it, it takes your mentality and the way you are to get you onto the next level. If you're going to settle, shit, kiss all your hopes and dreams goodbye. Because yeah. settling is what everybody in this world at one point is doing because X factor. I can't do this because of this. I can't do that because of that. And at one point, you got to be tired of it and be like, bro, just shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Stop making excuses. Go get whatever you want and go do it. If it's hard, hey, go do it. And if it's easy, then maybe everybody else wants it too and it's not worth it. So with all that being said, you personally, when, when growing up, you know, your your dad is an actor. How that how is that lifestyle like reflect on you? Is it like you gotta live up to a certain standard or was there no standards like, hey, be whatever you wanna be? Or was it like, hey, you gotta do this? Yeah, I definitely that definitely was very inspiring to me because my dad above anything is just a very hard worker. Mm. Like, you know, like he, he grew up in um Inglewood with his single mother. She she had him when she was seventeen, it's my grandmother. And then um, you know, he worked his way like uh, into into a uh, private school like like he could not afford but they gave him full scholarship just because of how hard he worked he did the same thing with college Damn. uh he ended up going to yeah like being a kid from Inglewood and then like working his way on a full scholarship and shit um and then you know continuing to follow his dreams and what he loved and you know that's the biggest ins- inspiration for me is is that work ethic but yeah I definitely I definitely at first wanted wanted to be an actor a kid I want to want to be on Disney Channel doing all that shit like like but, th- but then he's like no 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 keep your head down and just be a kid and enjoy enjoy your life, like and then and then you know the rest will come. What do you think that phrase is when they tell you be a kid? I've told like some of my high school kids, hey, just be a kid. What? How did you in- interpret that? I mean, back when I when I was a kid, I was like, oh, okay, dad, whatever. But but now now it's it's really like enjoy the time that you're in. I I try, I try to be a kid now. You know what I'm saying? En- enjoying the little things in life and and, and like like just ex- accepting and and appreciating the blessings that I have in every moment. Yeah, like you only have one life. Why the fuck would you do anything that you don't want to do? Like, just in, enjoy every every experience that you get. I don't get why, like some, let's let's say like high school kids or just kids in general want to be adults. 
Shit, yeah, I don't want especially to now because the oh. internet. All these kids like they grow up so much because they they at fucking like ten years old on these TikTok and all that shit. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> <laughs> and then like, oh well, I see all these famous people doing their things. These are adults, so I'm I'm just like them. But they don't under, they don't like they just they see the result without understanding the process. That's and then they try to be grow up they, sooner. They ask like, oh, I want to be an adult. I was like, no, you don't. Mm-hmm. You want bills? You want responsibilities? Like, yeah. Like there's exactly. a lot of shit that goes into being quote unquote adult, and it's not just owning the best car. It's not just owning mm-hmm. the freshest shoes or the freshest clothes. Like shit. He was making fun, of, not making fun of, but I told them, I was like, fuck, right now I shop big time at Target. Mm-hmm. I love Target. It's That's expensive best. at one point, but you know, I'd rather spend $20, $20 $30 on pants. Than going to spend a hundred dollars at Macy's, or sh- it's just like, bro, we're they're same, they're pants. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Target's got the best graphic tees. I don't know, I don't know what it's like. I, I went there like for January first, like Ali. The f- Muhammad Ali. There we go. Bro, like this, they had some Wu Tang shit. They had some Tupac. They had like a, a you know, like Super Bad McLovin tee. I was like, this is hard as fuck. <laughs> like Target's stepping it up. Like I, I, I don't know. I'm just that, that's that's another that's a gem right there. Shot get graphic tees at Target. That shit is fuck. <laughs> Better add us, Target. <laughs> yeah, let me get that sponsorship too, Target. <laughs> so, with, I think everybody has the the perception of being in the music industry of a flashiness, mm. owning the nicest car, owning the nicest jewelry, owning you know the nice things. For you, how is that process, or how is that like playing and affecting to you? Something you fall into, something you're trying to stay away from, or is just the way the social media has to play out? How mm. they say it, fake it till you make it. Nah, nah. Just do what you like. Like as far as, far as when, it, when it comes to presentation, correct. Just just rock what you rock. Like don't make irresponsible. Don't be irresponsible with your money. Like like as far as like big purchases, like buying chains of that. Put your money into something that is going to increase in value, not decrease it in value. Don't you know? Like if 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 you're buying something, buy land. That's the one thing I learned. Like Kanye always says that shit. Buy land. Be the owner. Own yeah. anything that 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 you're that you're ba- paying for. Like I don't really say the Rolex. Rolex right now is you buy one and in a couple of years is still making you money. But oh, the Rolex, oh, okay, gosh. Ooh, it, you got to tap into that. At, at least in the watch industry, that's mm-hmm. one that's big. But land itself is is, is huge property. Like you said. Reinvest into something that's gonna make you more money. I don't think a lot of people understand the process of reinvesting in yourself. Yeah. If I get a check for a thousand bucks, I'm gonna spend nine hundred bucks on myself. That's the mentality of everybody. If I get a steady two thousand bucks a month, I'm gonna go buy a Mercedes or a BMW or a a Charger or a Hellcat if you can afford one, <laughs> and I'm gonna look good. Yeah, I don't have bill. I don't have enough money to reinvest in myself anymore. Hell no! Like n- niggas will, will will have the look of of wealth and or, and not be wealthy. Like you can you, like there's there's no point in that. Like you look good now, but <laughs> two weeks you're gonna be homeless, nigga. Like f- <laughs> fix your life. <laughs> That's not the right way. <laughs> it's not the right way to yeah, live. That ain't the answer. <laughs> Bottom up. Start with building your assets and the things that have value and that make you more money than that increase the value. And then you know you can splurge a little bit like that that small um, percentage. Like I, th- I think it was fifty cent. He says either fifty cent or check. Like any any amount of money you make, take fifty uh, percent, uh, save it, and then take that other fifty percent, cut it in half, and then you can spend twenty five percent. I think that's what he said. Like like say re- reinvest seventy five percent of what you of whatever money you make. Financial teaching right there, bro. I, so, I mean that's that's what I learned from fifty cent. <laughs> <laughs> Did, you didn't learn that from school? Uh, no, nope. I learned that from YouTube. Not gonna lie to you, man. <laughs> YouTube University, bro. I'm, I'm not a finance student, so I had to go online. <laughs> yeah. YouTube University for a lot of people that haven't tapped in. You gotta tap in. Don't just look at interviews. At other, yeah. The, I honestly think the way that everything is like a biggest teacher is these people that are actually willing to speak on their journey. It is not just like uh, rappers. It's motivational speakers. Some of them, some of them are like, eh, you would say full of shit sometimes. Mm. But there is a lot of people that you could tell build it from the ground up. And then also actually just watching your surroundings. Watch what you have around you, how they move, what have they done? Why have they been in the same situation for the past 10, 15 years? Like we have, like, I think from where we come from, we, there is something to live up to. And it's go either buy a house or rent a house and stay there for the next 50 years. 
they they don't teach you like, hey, live here, get equity, sell it, go buy a new one, go do this, go do that. It's just, hey, stay here, build a family, and stay there for the rest of your life. It's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I live right now where I live, and I'm already looking two, three years. I want to sell it, get money, come yeah. back this way. Long term. Long term. You're going to be in not, not, not 10 days, not 10 weeks, 10, mo- 10 years. Longevity, like, bro. No. Longevity. Like, Have a l- goal. Then, you, then you're going to reach that goal. What 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 is your goal? The next ten years, next five years, next year. What is your goal personally? Simply, like without getting any specifics, is just doing me at the highest level. Specifically, uh, as far as my music, being the biggest artist of the generation, um, and doing that, you know, by starting with building the platform that I have for myself and then those around me, and and continuing to put, be an independent artist, but. Mm. Um, yeah, like using using the resources that I have co- to continue to incre- increase that. Heard independent artists, that's that's the way yeah, to go. I, I'm gonna own everything that I make because, like, if, if I'm just signing, I can sign an easy check to to a label and some like like give them ownership of everything I'm doing. I would be famous or successful. Yeah, but that's not long term success. I'm trying to have thirty year career. Not because you see, like all these plus. all these dudes, they get they get the the label signed, and then a couple years later they go independent, and everything they did before, like. They get really nothing out of it. Yeah, like I heard it from an interview with Big Sean. He said the worst thing that I ever did was sign, was signed to Ye. He's like my now manager told me back then this is the worst contract I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. <laughs> but it's just like, bro, like you this smash hits. How are you not? It's like well now ownership. And I think he even spoke about now building a movie theater in Detroit um, in a certain area. It's like. I'm owning him. I'm owning this. Like, this is me now. Like, so it goes back to ownership. Like, for you, like, I think that's so dope that you're learning that already now that you're not going to give yourself up for a certain amount of money, certain amount of check, and then not, lo- not look at the longevity of it. What What would it be the plan besides music? Have you ever thought about that? Like, once once music is done or once music, like, you, your passion goes into something else, what what do you think that would be? Yeah, so um, the, other, the other side of it is, you know, I, obviously I'm an artist. I have passion in that, and, and I'm going to take that to the highest level for myself. But um, the I've, very, I've learned a very big passion in business. Like a year ago, I started my first, like, marketing company. I was doing, like, like uh, music music marketing, like, for, for YouTube promotions, Spotify, Instagram, TikTok, all that shit. I was, you know, all this fun. Like, I, got, I had a couple contacts. I was like, okay, let me make money off this. Let me sell yeah. that information that I know that other people don't. Right. But, um for me, it's my company, Roaring Twenties. You know, it's, it's right now. It's just events and artist management, but I'm expanding. I want to expand that into a brand uh, for clothing um, and uh, sportsmen. Like I'm, I'm trying to just use that as an umbrella to add a bunch of other companies behind a production company. Right. Like I already have the all the people I want to be in charge of it. Like for um, contacts and, and stuff as far as that. And now it's really just building up the the, cr- the credibility um, of and cr- you know currency of of the brand that, that's that's why we start with the events right because uh, the company uh, we're actually doing investment banking that's the main source of income mm. that's passive income you know we have initial in- investors or whatever um this is some secret sauce uh <laughs> but um and you know for showing them what we have for like it's artist management it's events so we get that investment and then the money that we make we put it into uh day trading mm. and because that's passive income you i could we could throw in a, not throw an event a single year and still make bread um, but then the yeah. events is for building up the name uh, yeah. of the company. You know, like this summer, we're I mean, right now, right now we're throwing a, uh, local events in LA and New York uh, mm-hmm. with artists just building up the local street fan bases. But in the summer, we're doing festivals, mm-hmm. and we have we have connections with with you know big artists and stuff. So that that'll be coming soon. I'll let you know when those are yes, uh, here. But um, and and you know that's that's when you raise your name. Like when you're throwing when I'm when I'm throwing events with you know like these artists in the industry, then I'm be able to perform. Because I'm controlling. Right. It's the same thing as, as the clubs. Like You're if controlling you, it. Exactly. You're controlling that situation. So I, I'm a, as an artist, I could put myself at that level when if I was just if I was just like, oh, let me just, yo, let me perform just to whoever else is throwing the events, then I don't have that power. But now I do. Mm. So that's that's my mindset for it for both my company and me as an artist. It all goes together. That's another thing that I've learned recently is uh, every everything if you if you got ten things you want to accomplish if you're if you're seeing them as ten different things, it's not gonna get done. That's a lot of shit. It's a lot of time you gotta you gotta spread out. But the way to do it is see those ten things is just ten steps to one big goal. 
Mm. And then it's just, okay, check off one, check off the next, and put them in order. One step at a time. Exactly. It's as simple as that. Don't buy more than you can chew, right? Exactly. Just, just make it make sense. Like, all, all the things to. you're doing, like, if, if they don't align for each other, you're doing something wrong. It has to. If, if again, if how you said, if it doesn't make sense, then why are you doing it? Exactly. If it doesn't make sense, why are you doing it? Make it make sense. Make it make sense. That's, that's, that's probably my biggest, the thing I say the most this, this past this past 2021, and make it make sense. <laughs> Everything you do, if it makes sense for you and your life and where you want to be in the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. If it makes sense, go for it. Bet. On the last thing, building a, building a, a team, building a foundation. What, what do you, how do you build that? For you, what, what does that interact with? What, what do we look for? Yeah. That, for you, it has to be important. For, yeah. I mean, for everybody else also, but from what everybody knows is people just take, 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 and then at the end you get fucked. Mm-hmm. So for you, how does, how does that building a, a team of a foundation, how does that work? Yeah, as far as the people you work with, I realize the most important thing, if you know what someone wants, you know what they're going to do. Like, like someone could be the most unpredictable person, but if you know the reason that they're doing it, you know, like, okay, like, 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 like let's, let's say all this person wants is to be famous or, and, and, and not damage their business relationships. Okay. Then they're not going to, they're not going to fuck me over now because they, they know they, they're going to want me for, to help them later. Right. Um, but as far as a team, um, this is something I learned, like when I was throwing events, uh, in this past summer, I started Roaring Twenties New York for the first time. Like at first it was like, I, I called a couple of my closest friends out there, I was like, yo, I'm trying to throw these events, just, just, uh, I need, I need y'all to help me, and I was kind of running around, I was performing, but I was also emceeing, and the one that booked the venue, and promoting, and then I was like, okay, let me get all these people together, I was like, oh, I'm doing all this shit, I'm fucking exhausted, now it got done, nigga, I was tired as shit, so, so then a, a couple, a couple weeks into it, I realized, okay, no, I need to get someone that books the venues, that's not me, I need someone that is emceeing, uh, wow. So then they can they can control the crowd, and then when I come on to perform, I can just do my thing. Yeah. And then uh, you know, saying have having people and just delegation. That's really the biggest thing that I learned as being being like a, a CEO of your own shit. You cannot do everything. If if you're trying to LeBron all that shit, now it's good on on the the, the court. Yeah. Not in not in the business. <laughs> not no. in the business. If you're doing all that shit, that is a bad business. If Some, you're the only person that can do these tasks, you need to fire everyone that's around you. You need you need people that can you can trust to. Um, you have to like exactly. that. Somebody told me, and, and we know him, and he said, you can do 10 different things, bam, 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 and you do them well. But imagine you times 10. Yep. How much more can get done? That's crazy. At the same fucking level. That's a lot more. He was like, but you got to learn how to trust other people. Yeah. Again, at one point, you're going to run into, you know, some certain uh, hiccups and shit like that, but it ain't the end of the world. You know, a fucking a palace isn't built in one day by one person. It's built by a fucking team. Yeah. You know, for us, like, shit, you're fucking, when you get a gardener, not one gardener comes to your fucking house. There's about three or four that come yeah. and cut it. Yeah. When you build a roof, not three or, not one just do it. Three or four or five come and do it. So it's always a team. It has to be a team. Again, to a certain extent, I mean, you got to get started and you got to do it. Then you figure out what, what can you let other people handle. But... Until you get to that point, it's like, all right, you cannot control the whole thing because you're going to have to delegate. You're going to have to, hey, all right, I can't be here, but hey, can you do this and you do that? Yep. Said and done. Then you don't become too stressed. Exactly. Yeah, because like, I was. <laughs> as, soon, as, soon, as soon as you have someone else that can carry that weight, like, it's the best thing. Then you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. Ooh. You can't enjoy the fruits of your labor if you're just the only one doing it. Nigga, then you're not going to stop. You're going to keep working, gonna, and, it's, and you ain't going to be able to we're gonna enjoy going to be like, hey, let's all enjoy what I just did, please. Exactly. It's like, nah, hey, let's all enjoy what, what we, we all, did. What we all put in. Exactly. What we all put in. Stronger together. Like, I honestly learned that early on through creative shit. Like, not even before I was really doing business. Like, I used to be, uh, like, for, when I was in high school, I took, like, a photography class. So I mm. learned Photoshop and stuff. So I used to be really into, I mean, I still am into doing, uh, like, these, these Photoshop photos. I, would, I started with, like, doing clones of myself. I would, I would take, I got a tripod, I would take the photos, I would edit them and post them myself. And I started working with a photographer. I was like, oh, wait, they do this for a living. Like, I could do it myself and it would be great, it would be good, but if I, if I work with them, it's going to be great. It's a lot great. of time, bro. Exactly. Photography, videography. Exactly. Like, I have, That's a like, lot realizing, of time. even if you can do something, there's someone that can, that, you know, can do it better. And then you can, you know, work with them. Like, if, yeah. if that's not the thing I'm specializing, like, yeah. specializing in, then why don't just get someone else that has even, uh, their passion is that one thing. And they're going to do it better than you. 
because there, there's she's more like like I love I love editing shit, but like my passion's not editing. Like, like it might performing. be fun in the moment, but yeah, I, I'm a performer. I'm a, I'm an artist. I want to have that idea. But if I have someone else that is just as passionate about that shit, Correct. then they're gonna take it to an even higher level than I could have thought. Like. Everyone I have around me, I want to be they. they their their questions that they're thinking of, the thing that they're thinking of, should not be anything that I ever would have thought of on my own. If it's right. something that I would have thought of, nigga, I don't need you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but but like that's that's the people you want. You want those killers that like if if I'm working on something and I can't get it done, I know there's well, five said, other people that are doing it. If you're the smartest person in the room, then you're in the wrong room. Exactly. You want to be around everyone else doing more than you. I want to be dumb, so I want to learn. Exactly. I want to be in a room, act dumb, and learn from everybody else. Yeah. All right, cool. I got you. But how you said, if I'm listening to bullshit, then I'm just gonna exactly. Yeah. Like, like I'm like I'm a, I'm a give everyone an equal level of respect until they give me a reason to not respect them. Exactly. Have to. Exactly. Cause like I like there's the, I'm a, I'm gonna give everyone you know what they deserve. You know. They, what I'm they all do. We all exactly. We, you all have the right to talk and to say what you want. But there's a level. Of you start fucking up, I'm a, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that. <laughs> uh, you're cut off, bro. Exactly. Never again. And it's always like, all right, I'm, I'm not going to tell you. It's just I know I got to navigate differently. Yeah. I'm not going to navigate back to this. I'm going to put my GPS, go that way, and now come back to you because yeah. you're, you're full of shit. Just understand, understand what it is and then move accordingly. I literally said it earlier. It's about, it's not just about uh, if you're going to listen to someone, maybe you like them, maybe you don't like them, mm -hmm. but I'm going to learn something. Maybe If I like you, I'm going to learn how you did it, and I'm going to learn from you. But if I yeah. don't like you... I'm gonna learn how you how you did it and go differently. Yeah. So at the end of the day, like you still learn from me, whether you like me or not, you still learn, and that's a goal. Yep. You're always gonna have haters and and people that support. Mostly right. haters, but actually, that I think the people that support you are the ones that don't even know you. Yeah. When's your next single coming out, bro? Next single. Drop drop all the gems, all the IGs, the singles, yeah. the events. Where where we at? So we got the Holy Moly music video. That's just the song that I. Most recently dropped. Um, that video is coming out this Saturday. Mm, um, that's one of the craziest shits I've, I've done. I, I worked with this director. His name is Billy Miller. He's my boy. He was actually in one of my older videos as an actor. Uh, but like this is this is one of the, the first videos where like it was I let the director really do their thing. Yeah. And then like I I wrote, you know had my idea for what it was, but then we we're working together. and was like oh, this is dope. It's, it's again another example of like just delegating. I'm gonna let you like you have a passion in this, so I'm gonna let you do this shit. Like like. And Billy did his thing. Sick. Yeah. And the next event? Next event, uh, Friday the twenty first. Um, is yeah, this this next coming Friday. Next week. Yes, sir. We gonna have I think uh, a couple brands there: Pythia, Dead Homies. So clothing brands, um, artists, performers, myself, Oz Lamar, and then my my guy YDS Village. And then uh, yeah, a couple a couple maybe a food truck. Who knows? Your boy Derek. Who knows? Um, we got, we yeah, got some outs flyer we're outsourcing, right? Exactly, yep. <laughs> we're delegating. Mm -hmm, delegating. Exactly. I think that flyer should be up today. Um, yeah, pretty soon. We're going to drop all those fucking IGs. We're going to drop all the links. You got to stay tuned. Hey, appreciate you for the yeah, thank you for first artist, me. first pr producer. You guys got to stay tuned because we're going wild on this season three. But a toast to life, bro. You got yours? Right, I do. She, there it is.